Hey everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is uh, Rob Berger. Today, we're gonna talk about what I call the one-page financial plan. It's something that I set up every single year and it helps me to, first of all, remember all of the things that I'm supposed to do as it relates to our finances, including taxes, like make that IRA contribution or uh, you know that third quarter estimated tax payment. Uh, but it also helps me know that I actually did it and where I can find the proof, frankly, that, that I did it, which is very helpful at tax time. I will uh, give you a link to the templates that I'm showing you below this video. Frankly, they're very simple. You can create them without using the template, but if you wanna have access to it, uh, a link will be available below the video. So let's get started. So this is uh, what the spreadsheet looks like. Again, this is a, a template. These are not my numbers. Uh, but it uh, shows you sort of how I set this up. And uh, let's just walk through it. On the far left, all I do is a very quick summary of our investments and then a very high level net worth statement. Um, I divide our investments between these five categories, uh, cash, and here I mean cash in a taxable account and then a taxable investments, traditional retirement, Roth retirement, and then we have HSAs. And these are just hard coded, just typed in the numbers. Uh, and you can update it once a year or once a quarter. I use personal capital sort of, to sort of keep a real-time uh, tally of all of this. And then I just sum up uh, the totals. And then for net worth, I bring in the totals for investments. And then uh, I tend to only add our real estate to that. I don't really keep track of anything else. And we use Zillow for an estimate. And then if you have any liabilities, and you could add to this, of course, student loans or whatever you have. These are, again, just summing up the totals. And then you get your net worth. Uh, so that's the left-hand column of the spreadsheet. Uh, in terms of the actual sort of financial planning and tax preparation uh, parts of this spreadsheet, which is pretty much everything else, the first thing I do is I start with all of the contributions that I'm going to have to make myself as opposed to those that, that uh, if you work for an employer, they will make. So for us, that would be IRAs and HSAs. Now you, you may have HSA contributions come out of, your, out of your paycheck, but for the things I have to do, I wanna keep track of it. Uh, could also be a business retirement account like a SEP IRA. And what I do is I indicate the limits, actually for us, the IRA limits, because we're older than, uh, we're 50 or older, would be 7,000. But whatever the limits are for you, you could put them in this column just as a reminder. And then when I make the contribution, uh, I, I do two things. Uh, we'll, we'll use this as an example. I put in the amount of the contribution. So let's assume, I don't know, in April, I contribute $6,000. But here's the important thing and what I really think sets this process apart. I want proof that I did that because I know myself. Come, come October and I look at this spreadsheet without, without anything else but that number. I'm going to be wondering, wait, did I really, did I make that contribution? And, or, or I remember doing something, but it could have been for 21. Was it for 22? I can't remember. So here is how I deal with that. I use Google Drive. And um, for those not familiar, uh, Google Drive, and you get to it at just drive.google.com, is uh, your sort of, think about it as your hard drive in the cloud. It's where you can save all of your Google Sheets like this one. Google Docs, like this one, which we'll talk about in just a minute, you can save PDFs. Uh, so for example, if you get an email you wanna save, you can export it to a PDF and save it right here in Drive by just dragging it uh, to this window. And uh, so what I do is I each year will create a folder. Let's do that now. We'll call it 2022, I call it tax data. And there it is. And if I double click, it takes us into that folder. So in, in our hypothetical of making a $6,000 IRA contribution, I would take either, usually the email confirmation that I get from my broker, uh, could be a, a statement. Sometimes they mail you the confirmation. I, I would scan it, or you could even just take a picture of it. But I'd get it into a PDF form and I would drag it into my 2022 tax data uh, folder. And then I would grab a link to that folder or to that file, and I would link this $6,000. Now, how does that work? How do we actually do that? Well, let me show you, I'm gonna get rid of this link, and I'll show you how to do that. We'll use, instead of an IRA contribution confirmation, we'll come back to the drive, and I'll use this 
2021 tax information document that we're going to talk about in, in a moment. If I open that up, and actually I can just go here to do it, if you click share, and I can just copy the link right here, that's one way to do it. And I can come over and we'll, again, we'll use this as an example. I highlight the, the, the cell and I click this link. You could also hit Command K, but if I click that, I can simply uh, paste that link in, hit Enter, and there it is. And now if I click that box, I get a preview of whatever I've linked. And of course, if I click on it, I can then go to the document or uh, a receipt, a PDF, whatever I've linked. So back to our financial plan, I will link this $6,000 to uh, the PDF of the email confirmation or whatever proof that I have that I've actually made that contribution. And that serves a couple of important things. It's not, one is, it tells me I actually did it. When I come to this sheet and I actually see the link because it'll turn blue like it does down here, and I can even click on it and see a preview of the file. I know, yep, I did it. You, you, you remember correctly, Rob, you actually made that contribution. But here's the other thing that's helpful. I can use that at tax time to collect all of my documents at one place, and I will show you how that works in a minute. So I'll do that for the contributions. If you're married and you have a spouse and they contribute, I would do the same thing. I do that for uh, uh, HSA contributions, which we have to make on our own. Again, the same process. Now, one neat trick that I want to show you is, is what happens if you don't contribute all 6,000 at one time? Maybe you do 1,500 uh, each quarter. And so you have four receipts, four email confirmations. How do you link all four of them to this one number? And how, how do you record that? So the way I do it, is when I make the first contribution, if it's 1500, that's what I would put there. And if I know I'm gonna make more, I would come into my 2022 tax data and I would create a new folder. And I might call it in this case, IRA contribution. So this is a subfolder. If we go into the subfolder, you can see uh, the hierarchy here. And I would drop the IRA contribution receipts or email confirmations into this folder uh, as I make them. And what I can do is I can create a link, not to an individual file, but to this folder. So again, if I just come over here and I click the share button, I can copy the link and I'll come back to my uh, financial uh, plan and I'll do the same thing. But now I'm linking, instead of an individual file, I'm linking a folder. In fact, you can see it there. There's my IRA contribution folder, good enough. And then what happens is when I make the, the next contribution, say a 1500, I'll just change this to 3000. And actually, if I go back, I can do this in a way that doesn't uh, remove the link just by doing it this way. And we'll do it one other way. There we go. There may be an easier way to do this, but you get the idea. There we are. So now I know I've, I've contributed 3000 for the year. I can click on this link, there's the folder. I can go to the folder, and of course it should have, if I'm doing things properly, two confirmations for my two contributions. So that's how I do it if, I'm, if I want to link more than one thing to a, a single cell. And that really is the magic of this one-page financial plan. How else do I use it? Well, because we don't have a mortgage, we have to make our own uh, payments for, for real estate taxes. And so I kind of do the same thing. I'll have a folder for real estate taxes, it's always going to be inside of my 2022 tax data folder. And what I do for this is I'll record the date. So let's imagine I'd make the first payment. I think it's in, in uh, July. I'll put the date I made the payment. And just like we saw with the IRA contributions up here, I'll link either to a folder, if that's what I end up creating, or the individual receipt for that specific payment. And I'll do it for the second payment, which I think is normally in December. Now you can use this strategy for all kinds of things. If you're already at the age of taking required minimum distributions, you can plan that. Uh, you can put in here how much you're gonna take for the year. If you take it all at once, you can link to the, the, the confirmation when you took the RMD. Maybe you take it periodically. Again, you can use the folder structure. You can use this for your small business. So for me, I, I always am forgetting, you know, did I, did I, 
pay my business license fee? Did I pay my LLC fee to the Commonwealth of Virginia? Did I pay the tax that I have to pay on personal property used in a business? And where are all the receipts for that? I can never remember. So along the lines I just showed you, I create line items for each of those. And when I've paid it, the receipt goes into the Google Drive. I link to it in the appropriate place on my one page financial uh, plan and I'm good to go. So you can really use this for a lot of different things. If you pay estimated taxes, you can see I've got this set up. This is almost exactly what mine looks like. And I keep both 2022 and, and the previous year, because right now we're gearing up to file our 2021 tax returns and we'll need this information. So what you see here are the due dates. You'll notice, by the way, in Virginia, your first payments actually due May 1, not April 15th, but whatever your state requires. And again, as I make them, just like I showed you, I'm going to link the receipt to each of these dates. And so I can very quickly look at this. And if I see that these are all linked up, great. I know I've paid them. And if I have any doubts, I can hover over them, just like I can hover over this and see the receipt. So that tracks all of my estimated tax payments. Now, uh, I do that for tax returns, although I don't save my tax returns in Google Drive just for extra security. They're all password protected. Uh, but you can link to these on your hard drive, perhaps, or in per perhaps something like iCloud, which some view is a little more secure. Uh, but I do that as well. I just don't use Google Drive. And then the last thing I do, and this is really important, and it gets back to this document I mentioned earlier uh, that we linked here. I do a, a tax document, and this is a Google uh, Doc, not a, not a spreadsheet, for every tax year. And if we open this up, and again, as you can see, I link to it in my spreadsheet. As I open this up, this is, why do I do this? If I've got all the information here, why do I bother doing it here? And the truth is, you could choose one or the other, um, but the reason I do a separate uh, Google Doc is because I am going to share this doc with my tax preparer when it comes time uh, to uh, actually do our, our, our tax returns. So when they send me our signed engagement letter and it's fully executed, I put it right in Google Drive for our, our, our this would be 2021 tax data, but whatever tax year, and then I link to it right here, just like I've, I've walked through. I have links to all of our tax payments, and it's very easy to do. If this were linked, I could just uh, hit, uh, could copy that and bring it over and paste it right in here, and I'll show you that. Of course, if if it had been linked, the link pa pastes as well, so it would it link to the uh, do the document or the receipt. So I have all of our tax payments. I've got one more to add here, as I can see. Uh, I have, in our case, it's Virginia, but any state tax payments you have to make. I have state and local. So for us, that's going to be you know real estate taxes. Uh, in Virginia, we have car taxes. So again, I'm going to have the date that I paid them and a link to the receipt. Um, any contributions that uh, our accountant is going to need to know about, like HSAs, IRAs, Roths, if we do a Roth or Roth conversion, as you can see here, I'm going to have the receipts for that. Um, we would also add to this, by the way, if you're particularly if you're itemizing, I would have a section on charitable contributions, and I would do the same thing. I would link, in this case, typically create a folder for them, put all of the receipts in one folder, and then just total the amount and have the amount. So it would look something like this. Let's say we gave, uh, I don't know, five thousand dollars, and I would. Uh, highlight it, link it, just like we, we showed before, and I would link to the folder. And so I have all of our uh, relevant tax receipts and data all in one place. I share that with our tax preparer when it's time to do the returns, and I can also share this 2022 tax data. Um, whoops, let me go back to my drive. Here we go. I can share this with our tax preparer as well, and that will in turn give him or her access to all of the subfolders. So we've just created one for IRA contributions, but we may have one for charitable contributions, right? Uh, sometimes I'll create a folder 
for all of sort of my W-2s and 1099s and drag them in here as well. And so I have all of the tax data all in one place. I share it with my accountant. I share the tax information Google Doc with my accountant and they have everything they need to do our taxes. There you go. That's it. That's uh, I know I've kind of walked through a lot here. A at the end of the day, it's really pretty simple and straightforward, but it's been a lifesaver for me in remembering, have I done everything I'm supposed to do or not? Have I forgotten? Was that contribution in March? Was it for that tax year or this tax year? It helps me keep all of that straight, uh, straight and it makes tax time. Even frankly, if you're doing the taxes on your own, it'll make it a lot easier because you've gathered all of the relevant documentation and organized it along the way. And it's right there in, in a single uh, folder on a Google Drive. And you've got references to it either in the spreadsheet, that's what I like to use, or the Google Doc, uh, if you prefer that, or you could even use both. So I hope you find that useful. I've really found it helpful. Again, I'll uh, leave a link to these templates such as they are, very easy to create on your own if you want, but I will leave a link to those so that you can at least start with those templates if you'd like to. Hey, I hope this proves really helpful to you. If you have any suggestions, maybe you're looking at this and saying, Rob, there's a lot easier way to do something or we could add to it, would love to hear it. Uh, hear about those ideas or any questions you have, just leave them in the comments uh, below. And uh, there you go. Hope you have a great day. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.